Hi, everyone. Hello, and welcome to what are we doing today? The lunch hour so along. <laughs> if you were with me earlier for What's New Wednesday, you know that we just talked about Cup of Cheer, and now we're going to switch gears a little bit and put on our ice cream hats because this is part two of Two Scoops Bench Pillow. Of course, if you um, missed part one, it's not too late. You can always find part one, part two today, and part three, which comes on Friday of this So Along um, tutorial on YouTube and Facebook. So never miss an episode. You can always rewatch if you have to leave early. Looks like we've got people chiming in right now. Wonderful. Happy to have you here. Um, again, if you missed... <clears throat> um, Oh, there we go. If you missed part one, you can go back and take a look at that. We did how to do these applique blocks with um, a little bit of flexi foam behind it to give that ice cream a little bit of poof, <laughs> make it a full ice cream cone, right? And then we talked about our background quilting designs and how to add those so that the background quilting is behind your applique block that's what we did on Monday. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to trim this block using orange pop rulers, and we're gonna to go to the second part of the sew along, which is to talk about how to piece these blocks all on the embroidery machine and quilt them as well. Isn't that fun? Look at those half square triangles. Can you believe that can be done on an embroidery machine? So cool. And then the, also, let's see, these blocks down here are also the half square triangles. <laughs> there we go. The half square triangles that we'll be talking about today, how to piece and quilt those all in the hoop. If you are new to this tutorial, this is two scoops. This is available at quilt shops right now. And you can make it into a bench pillow like I have here, or you can turn it into a table runner, a wall hanging, anything that your heart can think of. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with what we need to do today. Um, we are gonna be piecing those half square triangles, like I said, real quick, let me show you how I even used that same piece block with this fun little tea towel idea. I took the popsicle from Two Scoops and put it onto a tea towel and then finished off the row with these piece blocks that I did on the embroidery machine, which is so, so cool, um, and made a fun little tea towel. Here's a couple other tea towels that I made also using two scoops. Of course, we've got the ice cream sundae here. Oh my gosh, it just doesn't get any cuter with that silver mylar dish. Oh my goodness. It's mylar with a piece of vinyl over it. Can we get a real up close of that, Andrew? Wow. So stinking cute. And then the final tea towel to match this set, I took the background quilting that you can find at Kimberbell.com and wanted to get some more use out of it besides just the pillow itself. I put this along the hem of another tea towel. Isn't that fun? So this is gonna make a great little gift set for a, someone special in my life. Make a great teacher gift, can make a great bridal shower gift. That's what that's going with. It's good. We're gonna put some hot, some not hot chocolate, some chocolate sauce, some caramel sauce, some cherries, some ice cream cones, you name it, some maybe ice cream bowls and make a cute little gift package with that. So I always want you to see the possibilities beyond just what the project is that we're making. And that's one of them. All right. So today let's talk about piecing, shall we? Let's go to page 40 in your instructions. This, of course, is a PDF that you can download. Here we go. Um, let's get an up close here of that. And uh, we are going to do... You can see there's blocks A, B, C, and D. Just because um, I decided to pick one, I chose C that we're going to show you today. But of course, they're all done the exact same way. Um, if you load block, um, the file for block A is the same for A and C. The file for block B is the same for block B and D, as it shows right there 
outlined in your instructions. All right, so I've got my fabrics cut and I'm ready to rock and roll. But it's important to know a couple of things that are a little different than what we did on Monday. On Monday, we talked about our background quilting um, being in the background, right? You do your background quilting and then you place your um, applique on top, right? Makes sense. But this time we're actually going to do kind of a combination of both. It's really simple to do. I'll show you here exactly how to do it, but it's also outlined in your instructions. But we need to combine the background quilting with the piecing. How do you do it? What order is it in? We're going to talk about that today. All right. So to give you an example of um, the project we're doing, the blocks we're doing today, like I said, we're doing C. Let's go to page 40. And let's get a real up close shot of this, Andrew, because I'm going to use the old highlighter, folks. So <laughs> teacher Kim is in the house and we're going to break out the highlighter so that it's really important what I'm going to talk about today and what I want you to note in your instructions. OK, so I am using this is the block I'm doing today. Okay, block C. And it says right here, my steps for block by block quilting. Now, I guess I should say before I go into block by block quilting, if you are not doing the background quilting as you go, um, no problem. You're going to want to skip right to hooping instructions. Okay. If you are quilting it, you're, you're, you know, if you're taking it to a long armor after, afterwards, or maybe you're doing it on your home a sewing machine after you've already embroidered, you'll want to skip right to hooping instructions and proceed with the rest, right? But because we are choosing to do block by block quilting with background quilting files from Kimberbell.com, this is the set of instructions you want to follow, all right? So it says to cut our stabilizer larger than our hoop. We're going to do that here in just a minute. And I am going to use a five by seven hoop. Uh, today for this. It will tell you right here if you're wondering, how do I know which hoop size to use? It'll tell you right here. Let's see. I just highlighted it. Boom. Five by seven. Okay. And then it says to following the manufacturer's instructions, you're going to load the quilting design and the embroidery file together. Okay. But here's what I want you to remember. It says load both the desired quilting design file. Okay and the pieced embroidery file into the machine with the pieced design on top. All right. Then we're going to uh, make sure they're centered together. Centered, that's why it's highlighted there. And then we're going to follow the block by block instructions on page 11. We're going to go to that um, to, to piece this. All right. So are you ready? We're going to go to page 11 for our instructions, and then we're gonna skip back to do to get our background quilting all set up, and then we're gonna proceed with actually piecing these cute blocks in the hoop. All right, my friends, now let's go to page 11. We're at page 11. This is like a, the reason why this is separate is that it's a resource for you. Pages 10 and 11 talk about the background quilting that we call block by block quilting. Again, this is optional and this these are files found at Kimberbell.com. There's two different styles of block by block quilting that we're talking about. Yet yeah, on Monday, I guess I should say part one talked about background quilting with applique blocks. That is what this was all about, right? Here we go. We did an applique block with background back background quilting. But if you turn the page to page 11, this is the one we are talking about today. And that is how to do background quilting with pieced blocks. That's a little bit different. All right. Okay. So we're going to start out kind of the same way, but then I want you to notice on the second column, there's some areas that are already highlighted for you. We'll get, we'll talk about why that's important when we get there. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Five by seven hoop is what I'm using today. 
I'm also using our Kimberbell Lightweight Cutaway Stabilizer right there. And because once you take this packaging off, you're not going to, it all looks the same. It all looks like white stuff, right? That's why we love our slap bands. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of batting, or not batting, stabilizer. It's a lightweight stabilizer. And now I can just slap that on there. And now it's not going to roll all over. And I'm always going to know what stabilizer that is, right? Um, I'm going to fit this in my 5 by 7 hoop. All right. So I, if you're following along in your instructions, I am on page 11. I, I've cut a piece. I've done step number one under piece blocks, which is to cut a piece of stabilizer larger than my hoop. Yep, sure did it. Now I'm hooping the stabilizer only and following the manufacturer's instructions, <laughs> I'm going to load both of those files together, my background quilting and my pieced block. But remember what I said earlier? The pieced block is going to go on top. All right. So that means my background quilting has to be loaded first. All right. So let's go over to the machine where I can show you visually how I'm going to load these together. I always say there's three different ways you can do this to combine background quilting designs and your design itself. Um, you can do it through software. You can do it by just doing one of these steps at a time, like do my background quilting first and then add my, my um, applique on it. You can do them as separate things. Um, in this case, I'm actually gonna combine it on the machine itself. All right. Now, when I say do background quilting first, that doesn't apply to piece blocks. This is a little bit different. Okay. All right. So I am going to go to my two scoops quilting bundle file on the machine. And oh, I forgot to show you, I guess I to tell you which, which design I'm going to pull up. It will tell me in my instructions. Okay, let's go to the overhead camera. So I can show you. If you're wondering what design to pull up, it tells you right here. It's the it's block C, and it says that our sample was made with KDQ091 food five. Okay, so I need to pull up that design on my machine, right? Because remember, the machine, the piece portion of this is going to go on top. Okay, so 091, here we go. And it is the two by six design. So this is, now I'm gonna click on embroidery files, right? There's embroidery files and instructions. I'm gonna click on the files. Now, here's a good example of when you, when you download um, quilting designs from Kimberbell, if it's an all over quilting design, meaning that it's just, and all over design, right? It's like swirls, loops, that kind of thing. You will have both a block by block method to choose from or a clear blue tiles method, okay? In this instance, we have both. When we did the quilting on Monday, there was only the block by block option because that has what we call traveling lines on it and it doesn't work with clear blue tiles. But if it works with clear blue tiles, you're going to have both options available to you. All right. But this one is something that works with both. But because I'm doing it block by block and I don't want batting in the seams, I chose block by block quilting. Now, there's nine different file formats here. I'm choosing PES because that's, the, that's what this machine uses. But certainly... All the brands and machines have their file types on there. You choose which one you need for your block. Now, in the instructions, it said to choose the two by six block. You can see there's a whole lot of sizes available to you with the one download. I'm choosing the two by six right here. And now I can hit the set button. 
All right. Now, your machine may be a little different than this one. So if you don't have these buttons that I'm showing you, you will have something very similar to them. All right. So I hit set and I can see that this is going to be my background quilting, right? But remember what it said in the instructions. We need to put the pieced design on top of that. So what I need to do is hit add. Okay, so I hit add. Now I'm gonna go back and find my pieced block design. Do you see how now I have all the designs showing for two scoops? If Again, if your machine doesn't have these um, thumbnails, that's okay. Just look at the name of the file and pull up the name of the file that it, it's requesting. But I know I need this one right here, which is one of my piecing templates. And now that comes up, right? Now I'm going to hit set. And look at that. It looks kind of funky right now. But and can we get any closer on that? You're going to see all kinds of crazy lines going all over and some background quilting going over. It's all going to work, I promise, when it's all said, said and done. The two designs are combined with the piecing portion on top, and then we're going to hit embroidery. Okay, so right now you may be thinking, but Kim, why, why would I put the piecing on top, right? Why would I put the piecing on top? I want to see the background quilting. It's because of a few steps that that, um, what happens on your machine first, and then you skip ahead to the piecing. Again, this is outlined on page 11. So I'm going to walk you through the steps here, which are a lot easier to show you than to speak it but also refer to page 11, where we walk with you every step of the way for making this happen. In the end, it's going to look like you pieced the block and then the quilting came on top. It's crazy, it's magic. Trust the process is what I like to say. Trust the process, all right? Okay, so now we again are on page 11 and now I can go to step four which is to stitch my placement outline. This is being stitched directly on top of my stabilizer. And that way I will know where to place my batting. All right, let's go ahead and go to that point. <clears throat> This is just gonna stitch a rectangle so I know where to place the batting. Okay, easy enough. So I've got my rectangle stitched out. There we go. There we go. And now I go, oh yeah, now I need to place my batting. Okay, you just need to lay a piece of batting that's larger than your rectangle. All right. Now, if you're wondering, can you give me a size, Kim? What is that? First of all, you could eyeball it and say, well, I'm just going to cut it larger than my placement line and make sure it covers it, right? You could certainly do that. Let me show you an easy way of figuring this out too. Let's go to page 43 in your instructions. This is this is after you have uh, pieced the block together, but I'm showing you where you can find the right information, okay? On how big to cut your batting. It's not listed in here because we're assuming that you're not doing background quilting. Um, so if you want to get an actual size, always go to the very end where it says trimming instructions and you look at what size it's going to end up at. This size, as it shows, is two and a half by six and a half inches. So that means 
I just want to make sure my batting is cut a little bit larger than that trimming size, that end size that we're going to get to. So instead of two and a half by six and a half, I'm just going to cut it at three by seven. All right. That's an easy way for you to tell how big to trim your batting. Now, another easy way is in the background quilting download itself. Um, there will be a set of PDF instructions and you can look on a chart there and you can see on that chart how big to cut your batting. Or if you're like me and you just want to eyeball it, you can certainly do that too. All right, I'm placing this back on my machine so it can do the tack down stitch and then we'll trim away the extra batting. Okay, I am on step, let's see, I'm on step six for those following on page 11. All right. Um, Mary says, I would love to see a cutting video. Okay, Mary, we could certainly do that. I think that's a great idea. We'll have to uh, keep that in mind for one of our upcoming projects. I'm assuming you're just talking about cutting um, your fabric pieces, right? From um, from the kit. Yep, we can do that. Along those lines, mm -hmm. Kim, yeah. this is another question about cutting. Okay. It's Patricia Poland. She says that I asked on Monday about the orientation of the cutting guide mm -hmm. being vertical or horizontal. Yes. And we referred her to the book where mm -hmm. she could see those pictures. Sure. But she said she still doesn't quite understand. And would Kimberbell possibly do a cutting tutorial? That's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like that would be helpful for several of you and probably many more that, you know, even haven't mentioned that yet. And so I love that idea. Yes, we can certainly do that in an upcoming video for sure. What I just did now, let's go ahead and go to the overhead, is I took my duckbill applique scissors. Well, let's move a few things here. There we go. And I trimmed away the extra batting that was there. Okay, just whoop, whoop, all the way around. Um, because now um, it's going to, well, let's, let's hold on just a minute. This is a good time to go back to our page 11. Because this is where it gets a little different. I've trimmed up that batting close to the stitch line. But let's get real up close on this, Andrew because this is where it changes just a tad. All right. Oop. I placed my project batting, right? Check number five. I stitched the batting tack down line. Yep, check, I did that on number six. Number seven, I trimmed the batting close to the stitch line. Check, that's what I just did right here. Now, Here's why it's highlighted in yellow. It says skip to the machine step that stitches the piecing template. Okay, that's when you're going to stitch the piecing template on, on top of that batting. All right. So the reason why you had to load, load your background quilting first is so that you could get all the way up to this point already. But now it's time to piece it on top of this, right? And then we quilt on top of that. So let me show you on the machine how I'm going to stitch um, or I'm going to skip the machine steps to go to the piecing template. All right. There should be on your machine some kind of function, a button, um, something, let's see, let's get really close to this right here, Andrew, that would probably give you like some kind of needle, maybe icon. It might have a plus and minus feature, something to that effect. Whatever is the function on your machine that allows you to skip ahead stitches or go back stitches. That's what you want to press. Okay. So I'm pressed that. And now I'm going to move my um, my machine steps until I see, look, I see the ice cream cone right here design. 
I don't know if you can see that, but I'm seeing the, I, I'm seeing the background quilting and I know the very next step after background quilting is my piecing template. Can you see that by any chance, Andrew? Okay, the piecing template, that's what I'm skipping to. All right, with that in mind, now that we've done that, we are going to um, stitch the piecing template on top of that batting, just like it says on page 11, okay? So let's go ahead and press our foot down. Oh, well, I guess we should put our, our uh, hoop back on, right? <laughs> that would be important. And now the piecing template is going to be stitched. While that's stitching, let's go ahead and go to the overhead. While that's stitching, I'm turning my book now back to the area where I'm going to start piecing. And that is page 41, 41. This is where I'm at. So I'm already prepped for doing my background quilting when it comes time to do it. But right now we gotta piece those little blocks, right? So what we did just now is we, there we go. Step one, we stitched the piecing template directly on top. In this case, it's on top of the batting. Right here it says stabilizer, but it only says that because it's assuming we didn't do background quilting, right? So we stitched this template. Let me show you what it looks like right here. There's our template, okay? And this right here is section one. How do I know? Because it shows me in my diagram right here. One, two, three, four, and so forth, okay? So I am stitching, or I just, this is the area I'm looking at, section one. Now, um, yeah, section one. Now I'm going to do the next step is to place your piece one fabric right side up over section one. All right. It's a white piece of fabric. Again, it says with the right side facing up, and I'm going to have it at an angle, okay? They're extra large pieces because we want to make sure that everything gets caught, right? It, it needs to, everything needs to catch. Let's see. Oh, that's my right side. There we go. Right side facing up, um, just enough to cover that entire triangle. All right. Now, I've done that. So the next step is step two in the instructions, okay, which is to stitch the trimming and placement line. All right. Let's do it. Okay, so I have now stitched that, and now we are at step, let's see, stitch the trimming and placement line. That was step number two, check. Now it says to trim the fabric close to the trimming line. All right, just like it shows in the instructions. Done, check. Check with me, right? Now, um, place it says place piece two fabric with the right side facing down, um, centered along that line. Okay, we can do that. Let's see. I'm going to actually, I'm using a few different fabrics because I am looking at, well, I, I put one, Oh, I see what I did. I was going to do C with the color, but I ended up doing A. That's okay. They're the exact same file. I just put the white piece of fabric down first because I was following these directions, and that's what you do want to do. So 
you just follow the color guide as you wish to follow it, whether it's the white starting here or the white down at those other areas. Just follow that, okay? But I'm going to follow exactly what's in here. How's that? Let's do it that way. That way my coloring, my color of fabrics will match exactly what's being shown here. All right. So I'm taking my orange piece of fabric and I'm placing it with the right side facing down. Okay, right sides together. And I'm centering it right along this line that I just cut up against. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna stitch a perfect quarter inch right along there so that when that's done, I can flip it over and I've got a pieced seam and it'll be the perfect quarter inch, which I love. Okay. Any questions before this gets done? No, doing good, okay. All right, so now what has happened is that you have a perfect quarter inch going right along here and we need to turn it over and press it. There's a few different things we could do here. We could use um, a, a little mini iron for sure to do that. Um, but I like to use what we call the fabric folding pin. This is a tool from Clover and quilt shops carry this. And it just has a little bit of starch solution in it so that you can run it along that line and then flip it over and then just give it a gentle finger press. And it's as if you took a hot iron to that, but you didn't have to worry about an iron and it will stay put. It's awesome. Okay, so what I did here, let's look at that compared to the directions. I stitched this line, which was three, right? Done, check. And I turned it right side over, check. And now I'm to um, number four, which is to st stitch the trimming and placement line. That's actually going to go across this way. All right. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm matching it up to the directions here. I stitched across, stitched across. Now the next step is to trim it right up close to that line. So let's do it. I'm gonna lift this up, pull it nice and taut, and just run my scissors right along there to trim that up. All right. Next step um, is we're going to place the next piece of fabric with the right side facing down and just choose another white fabric, right side facing down, and I'm lining it up. There we go. Lining it up right against that line, the stitch line. Don't worry about this extra out here. This is all going to be in the seams. All you're worried about is where the stitch line goes, okay? So I'm going to just center that right along there. And now the next step as shown is five, which means it's going to stitch across um, here and therefore we can turn our fabric right side out, or right side out, just, yeah, to the right side. And you know what, with this white fabric, I think I need to switch this, yep. I'm gonna put the right side facing down and then flip it over. All right, let's do that. I like that um, C. Lombard, let's see, she says, I will refer to this video when I start my two scoops, taking some notes now. I think that's a really um, smart idea, um, C. Lombard, because it's nice just to kind of sit back and watch the tips now 
and take some notes, if you will. And then when it's time to just fully engage and relax and enjoy, you know, the process without trying to keep up or follow along too much um, step by step, you can just watch it. And then when it comes time to doing it, it'll be easy peasy. All right. So I have just finished instruction step five, as you see here, right there. There we go. Um, that matches right there, right? And now I'm going to flip the fabric right side up. But first, I'm going to use my little tool here to run this across. Again, if you don't have this, um, you can use... Um, you can use, what do they call those seam, um, the seam, a clapper. That's what I was thinking of. Like a clapper, you could use that to press the seam down. Uh, you could use like a roller to press the seam down. You could use an iron or, of course, something like this. All right, so now we've uh, flipped that over. We're now at step six in the instructions, which is to stitch the trimming and placement line. That is going to go across right here. All right. So we're at step six in your instructions. Um, the next step is to trim the fabric close to that stitch line, just as outlined right here. So what I'm about to do, lift it up nice and taut and trim it up. Okay, let's go to the top of the next column. Um, you're gonna place your next piece of fabric. It's this really pretty new uh, color, a solid color from Kimberbell. And we're gonna place it right along that line at an angle, and now it's gonna do a quarter inch. Now, because you know the steps now of placing, trimming, piecing, the whole bit, I'm gonna keep this hoop here and I'm going to show you that you don't have to take it take it off each time. You can just run your little fabric folding pin, they call it, um, right along this line, and not have to take it off of my hoop, which is kind of or off of my machine, and then just turn it. Okay. Give it a gentle finger press, and now I can stitch the next step. You know the drill. <laughs> We're going to trim that up. So I'm just going to pull it out just a little bit so I have, you know, easier access to this. And now I'm just going to trim it right up next to that line. And the next step is to lay another piece of white fabric with the right side facing down. All right. See how simple and easy this is? It stitches that perfect quarter inch. I'm going to take my pin to it. Oh, I might have to move it just a little bit to get there. Okay, and then fold over. Give it a little finger press, and I'm ready for my next line. We're almost done, guys. Okay, 
What are we going to do, guys? We are trimming it up. Trimming time. All right. And then we're ready for our last piece of fabric for this section of the block, which is this pretty new blue color. Again, one of our new Kimberbell solids. And now it's going to stitch the perfect quarter inch. All right, now if you will turn to page 42. Oop, there we go. So now I flipped that over. Now it looks really funny right now, doesn't it? <laughs> like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like half square triangles. Oh, but wait, what is my, my saying? Trust the process, right? Because on the top of page 42, we're on page 42, at the top it says, Stitch the trimming guideline. Okay, in this case, this hoop is 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 ready. It's big enough. A five by seven is big enough for us to stitch a trimming placement line that's going to tack down all of this fabric. All right, and then we'll know exactly where to cut it. But I want you to look. Here's another highlight moment, you guys. <laughs> My highlight moment is we still have to get this quilted after we do that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stitch that next step, which is a trimming guideline, but I am not putting an X through it, not going to remove it from the hoop quite yet. We still have to finish our, our quilting on top of it, which means I'm going to now go to page 11. Page... 11 after I stitch that trimming guideline. All right, let's do it. I love when these blocks come together. It just oh, makes me happy. I didn't have to stress over that quarter inch, right? So here's what just happened. We stitched the trimming guideline, right? Right here. But now what are we gonna do? We're gonna go to page 11 because we've got to finish our quilting now that goes on top. All right, here we go. Page 11 it is. Ah, here we go. Notice step nine. It says continue following the embroidery instructions until the block is complete. Yep, we did it. We completed it. But do not remove from the hoop. Nope, we didn't. We followed directions just like we were supposed to, right? <laughs> because this is important. Step 10 is to return to the machine step that stitches the quilting design. All right, remember that cute quilting design that I loaded earlier? It's time to do that on, our, on top of that quilting. Let's go ahead and go to the front. Remember the cute little ice cream cones and maybe a malt in there or something? I can't wait to do that on here. All right. So I'm going to actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to keep it in black thread only because I want you to be able to see how cute the quilting is. If I was doing this particular one for the one I'm going to do for my home, I might keep it to white because you know me, I kind of like to blend things. But when it comes time to actually seeing some really darling quilting, I might be tempted to change it to like a maybe a really light blue color or a light orange color or maybe a really, really light um, lavender color so that at least you can see the quilting. It's totally a personal preference. I'm going to keep it with the dark gray color, the 
kind of black uh, thread color just because I want you to see it on this one. And this is just a sample block anyway. All right. I'm not going to put this in my final one. But, you know, try try different colors. You, you might be surprised and absolutely love the look. So let's go back to the machine. I'm placing this. It looks like we're done, but we still got to do the background quilting. So let's get an up close of where I'm going to go next. Remember that plus and minus needle that like moves your machine steps, your color stops. I'm going to do that until I can see that the background quilting is what is about to be stitched. Oh my gosh, there's a cherry on there too. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Okay, so I'm ready to stitch this background quilting design on top of these piece blocks. Someone mentioned that they wanted to do variegated thread. Oh, that's a fun idea. Yeah, Anne says, for block C, the section one is purple. Yeah, I I was following the book and not my, my color chart there, but that's okay. That's okay. Whichever, what I want you to do is follow, follow whichever color way you're going to use um, in one. Of, let's go to the overhead. When you go to do these blocks, remember that the file type for A and C are the same, okay, A and C, but the directions right here show you block A coloring. But if you want to do the C coloring, you would use the same file. Block The file for block B and D are also the same, just the colors are in different places. So just follow along where the colors are. Okay, this is almost done, guys. Again, this is probably, I don't think I would use a dark black color for this normally, but because I want you to see how cute the quilting is, and this is just a little sample block I had to show you in a dark color. Oh my goodness, look! You see the little um, malt or the ice cream float or um, the shake? That is super cute. And then, of course, it then swirls into the soft serve ice cream cone, which matches that little guy. And then the cherry on top. Very, very fun. Okay, so um, you can see, let's, another place to look out for the quilting. Um, page 40. There's different quilting options you can choose from. And we list the ones that we used in here. Of course, you can use any of them, any or all of them, but I really was excited to show you what this ended up looking like. All right. Okay. You're done. Kind of. <laughs> you're going to repeat this process four times, four, four times total. Okay. You're going to do four of these in the hoop. And then once you're done with that, um, you will sew the blocks together as outlined in the instructions so that you have one of your areas will fit right here one of your three pieces let's do this right here one of your three pieces go right here <laughs> and action <laughs> there we go okay one of your strips will go right there. And then the other three strips are what's down here. Across. All right. So much fun. How many of you love piecing on your embroidery machine? Oh, my goodness. So much fun. So much fun. We've got lots, lots more piecing stuff coming out for you. It's pretty exciting. All right, so any questions um, before I show how to cut this? Any questions on the piecing? Libby? Yes, we have a couple of questions. Okay. One, the first one is from Janet Rankin. Oh, hi, Janet. Her question is, could you do couching with a thicker thread? 
Oh my goodness. Couching with a thicker thread would be darling. I've never done it. I know what it is. Um, I've never done it with something like this. And so, yeah, Andrew, it's not the couch you sit on and watch TV. Andrew's like, couching, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> He's down for couching. No, couching is a really cool technique. Uh, people often use it like with thicker thread or yarn or ribbon, and then machines will like tack that down. I don't know. If you give it a try, let me know. I'd love to see what it looks like. Great awesome. question. Okay, and then we have another one from mm -hmm. Diana Weirman. Hi, Diana. Here is her comment. She says she's new to quilting and background quilting. She likes the neutral colors, but co or, or she likes the neutral colors. Yeah. But colored thread sounds fun. Mm -hmm. and so here's her question: If you did this block in a color, do you have to stay on that color for all, or can you change colors per block? Oh, Diane, 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 have fun with it, right? Yeah, I mean, you would keep, like with a, a section of three like this is, yes, you would keep the same color thread. But when you go to do your next section of three, then use like, you know, a light pink color and you do your next section of three and you use a light lavender color. Mm, can't wait to see it. That would be super cute. I'm thinking, because when you sew this row together, the three sections, you would have it all in different colors of thread, and it would be so cute. So I love that idea, Diane. Absolutely, you can do that. Any other questions, Libby, before I do cutting? No. All right. Let's cut this, shall we? That was easy, right, for part two? You know, this is, once you learn that piecing technique, you can use it for any of our piece projects. If you go, if you are on a different Kimberbell quilt and it has some piecing in the hoop, you know, you can always refer to this tutorial because it will be the same um, for that as well. All right, so a couple things. I promised you I would show you how I used orange pop rulers to cut Monday's block. Let me go ahead and just show you what I'd be doing for this block first, just to cut it down and then, um, I'll show you orange pop rulers and some tips for using them. All right. Oh, where'd my rotary cutter go? Here we go. All right. And I need a ruler, which, ooh, Andrew, do you see my ruler anywhere? Over there. Okay. I'm not seeing it right now, but, but you can, uh, you can visualize with me for this or actually, hmm. You know what? I will just use the side of an orange pop ruler. How's that? I'll just do that. We can use that. What I need to do is I would take a ruler and just, you've got the trimming lines already stitched out for you here. And then what you can see is that you're gonna have a perfect quarter inch without batting in the seams here in just a moment. So I would probably normally take a regular ruler, but since I don't have it right here with me, I'm just going to use the side edge of my orange pop ruler and line it up there. All right, there we go. There's one side, this is this. Just trimming right on top of that line. And then by doing that, that's going to give you the perfect um, two and a half by six and a half, I think it is, inch block. All right. Easy peasy. Look at that. Perfect piecing in the hoop, my friends. Perfect piecing. Sounds like a me time subscription, right? <laughs> Perfectly pieced. Oh, you just wait till you find out more about that one. It's a fun one. But look at that. It is perfectly pieced in the hoop and we cut it down and there is no batting. If I were to open up this little seamed, uh, the edges, there's no batting in that seams, which means when I go to sew this into my actual block, or my actual quilt or my table runner or whatever I end up making this into, 
uh, there's no, there's not going to be extra bulk, which is kind of cool. So there's that one. Now let's go to orange pop rulers. Um, if you, how many of you have orange pop rulers? How many of you are thinking about orange pop rulers? How many of you are thinking, well, I have orange pop rulers, but I've never used them. <laughs> Let this be a sign to open up the package <laughs> and get them out. Cause I'm going to show you, um, my tips for cutting this block down to a four and a half by six and a half inch size using orange pop rulers. Okay, so our orange pop rulers come in um, two different shapes. We've got a square set all right here. And as you can see, there's three different size rulers here. They're engraved in, um, in the ruler itself, what size they are. And then you have uh, two half square triangle rulers that are part of that. So you get a lot for your money with these. Um, these have these extended corner channels in each corner. There we go. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yes, there. Okay, right. Zoom in right here, Andrew. Right. Well, there, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Extended corner channels, which means your rotary blade can get set in there and then it will cut it right to the very corner and um, give you a nice clean cut. Um, they have these um, uh, non-slip grips on the back to also help hold this in place. And you can use them um, for projects beyond Camberbell too. You can use them for fussy cutting or t-shirt quilts, denim quilts, you name it, but certainly all the Kimberbell projects because uh, we use them every day at Kimberbell. So this is the square set. I'm going to put that one aside because I'm actually going to use the rectangle set today. There are again three sizes of rectangles. You have a four and a half by six and a half inch one, six and a half by eight and a half inch, eight and a half by ten and a half inch, and certainly, if you wanted even one size larger, you could cut on the outside of the ruler and have a 10 and a half by 12 and a half inch size. With the rectangle set, you also get two sizes of a flying geese ruler. You get a tumbler block ruler, and you get a very handy dandy little quarter inch ruler. Just Those are just little extras, I call them, okay? So we're gonna set this aside. We want to cut this at this size. This is the four and a half by six and a half inch ruler. To do this, my number one tip, my friends, is to get yourself a rotating mat. This will make your life so much easier <laughs> with orange pop rulers. A rotating mat is, is pretty awesome. And I think anyone out there would agree. <laughs> and rotating mat is needed for something like this. The nice thing about it is you don't have to move your block itself. You're moving the mat. So I always swear by it. Okay. Um, if this is the size I want to get down to, then all I have to do is I can visually place this where I want to cut it. Um, to get the perfect four and a half by six and a half inch block. So I'm going to place it right on top here. I could use my quarter inch ruler if I wanted to, to also measure each side to make sure that it's nice and centered. And as you can imagine, if there were like, especially if there were like extra stuff on here, um, even with this foam that's underneath here, a regular ruler is not going to lay flat on that. So this gives you an open window. It's nice to have the open window also so that you can visually see where you're cutting before you actually make that first cut. Um, so I'm going to place that on there and I could start cutting on the inside. But because I've got some other rulers that will also still work with this, I'm going to use them to my advantage. Um, as you can see here, I'm starting with this four and a half by six and a half inch block. This is the block I want to get 
cut to. But I'm going to go ahead and take my next size ruler and just pop it there on top so that they're nestled together. And when I do that, I've got more surface area for my hand to hold on to when I go to cut. Now, certainly I could cut without it. But boy, why not take advantage of that extra space, that extra surface area, and use it um, for when I'm cutting? Boy, if I wanted to, I could even take the next size ruler, pop it on there, and now those three rulers are still nested together, and I have even more surface area for my hand to hold on to. This is entirely optional, but it's if I've got the extra rulers to do it, I'm going to do it. Okay, now say for example, as I said, this was a four and a half by six and a half inch ruler or square block. What if I wanted to go the next size up to six and a half by eight and a half inch size? I could still do that. In fact, what I would do is actually keep, I would start with the smallest ruler I have, keep it there, build it out to the ruler size I need, build it out, build it out if I needed to. But because I know this is centered now, I could just remove this and I could cut all the way out here to the next size, knowing that this is still centered. Isn't that awesome? Boy, if I had enough fabric that was going out to here and I wanted to cut it at the next size, you better believe I'm going to keep, I'm going to start small and work my way out. I'm going to then take this one off. And again, I, if I had enough fabric out here, I would use this ruler to cut the next biggest size. All right. So that's just another little tip. Let's get to the cutting. I'm going to use just a, <clears throat> a regular 45 miller, millimeter uh, rotary blade. And I'm going <coughs> to... I think I need a drink. Um, I'm going to place it in my corner right here. Hold on just a minute as I take a drink of water. <clears throat> okay. So because I'm a right-handed person, I'm going to cut starting to my left. Okay. That means my blade, my rotary blade is butting up right against the side of the ruler. If I was a left-handed person, what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and go to the other. <coughs> okay, again, if I was right, I'm gonna start to the left. <coughs> if I'm left, a lefty, I'm gonna start to the right. Hold on. I think I've been talking too much today. What do you think? <laughs> all right, I could talk all day long. Let's go ahead and start cutting. Another thing I would re would recommend is actually that you stand up when you do this, okay? That just gives you a little bit more pressure and ability to, to see this all at the same time and have that pressure um, on there and easily rotate it. Because I'm a righty, I'm starting to the left. If I was a lefty, I would start to the right. Whatever side you, you need to go to, the blade needs to hit the side of your ruler, okay? And remember those corner channels, they're extended. That's gonna allow you to put your blade into one corner channel and just slide it right along until you get to the other corner channel that goes beyond the block. This is where the rotating mat is so great. I just have to turn it, okay? So I'm gonna start in the corner closest to me, put some pressure on there, and then um, rotate it. It's beautiful, look at that. We have now cut the perfect size block that's gonna fit in the two scoops bench pillow. This is a four and a half by six and a half inch block. When it's all sewn and done, of course it ends up being a four by six. So there is to it. So hopefully those tips helped you out with orange pop rulers. If you do not have orange pop rulers, 
um, I encourage you to put them on your wish list. I encourage you to ask for them for Christmas, birthdays, or just to treat yourself sometime because you will use them for every Kimberbell project there ever was. Um, we use all these standard size blocks, but because they are standard size blocks, you can use them for, for just about anything. All right. So there you have it. And you can find them at Quilt Shops. Any other questions I can help answer before we sign off for today? Oh, okay. Let's see. <laughs> I have to, I, I just got to pull up one thing real funny, uh, a funny right now. Real quick, Sonia, my orange pop rulers are neatly in the package for looks. Sonia, Sonia, let's chat, shall we? Eye to eye. <laughs> Get them out of your package. Get them out of the package and start using them. Your life will be changed. <laughs> Please, Sonia, tell me that you're going to get them out of the package today and try them out. You will be like, what did I ever do without these, right? <laughs> oh, Sonia, you crack me up. Okay, tell me you're going to do it. <laughs> Now, what are the, what are the questions? Okay, we just have one question. Okay, and it's from Leo Jones on okay. YouTube. Hi, she Leo. said she just tuned in late. Did okay. you piece that block first and then do the quilting? Kind of, sort of. So what you do is um, when you get a chance, Le Leia, I want you to go back and watch because. Um, you, what you do is you end up, and it says this in the directions, but also just watch the video and I'll walk you through it too. But you end up loading <clears throat> loading your um, background quilting file first, and then you put the, the pieced design on top. Where's my instructions? Here we go. I want to point, point out where this is because I, I don't want you to, I want you to remember. Okay, whoop, on page 40, Leah, um, you're placing your piece to design on top, which doesn't make like, when you first think about that, um, Leah and everyone else out there, let's go ahead and go to the front. When you first think about that, you go, why would I put the piecing on top? Well, it's because the initial steps of doing the background quilting allows you to put your batting down first and cutting away the extra batting. But then you piece it on top of the batting and then you quilt. So there's a series of steps to, to remember when to do that, how to do that. And that is found on page 11 of your book under pieced blocks. Follow those steps under piece blocks and you will be, you'll get it done in no time flat. Easy peasy. All right. And welcome. Glad you can make it. Any other questions? Looks like that's it. That's it. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today for part two of the Lunch Hour So Along, where I give you tips and tricks and ideas on how to do the different techniques in this pillow. And then, of course, once you've learned those techniques, you can, you know, uh, put those techniques to use on just about any Kimberbell project. Join me on Friday for part three of this So Along, where I'm going to be talking about how to do the borders the borders in here okay with background quilting and then i'll give you some extra tips on some of the embellishments um working with some of the embellishments as part of this pillow too so join me on friday for that until then have a wonderful day thanks for joining to me joining me today um if you missed the the what's new wednesday earlier this morning it was all about cup of cheer so i invite you to to take another look at that. And I will see you, let's see, I'll see you on Friday. Thanks for joining me, bye-bye.